welcome back guys in this video we shall work upon our repository so let's come and work over here this is our class user repository and what we want is like this thing will require our api services to work further so let's have a private well now why private since this thing is limited to this class only that's why we have implemented private so let's have a val api which is going to extend user api so this thing is basically going to extend my user api and what I'm basically trying to do over here is like this repository is basically having a suspend function. Let's say get users. And this function is going to return me something that is of type like we I will have a result. The result is of type list and list of what we are going to have a list of users in return from the API. Okay, now I would have something like a delay of let's say a delay of one second, let's say, or let's have something like 200, 2000 milliseconds that's equivalent to two seconds actually. Why I'm having this delay now? The reason behind is that I am fetching the data from a fake store. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some dumb users. The dummy users is basically helping me to show some sort of data, right? So let me have a val. The val is like fake users. The fake users is actually a list of the fake user is actually a list of users. Now let me try to have some users. So what I can do is like yeah, let me have my first user and his name would be Navdeep and let's have some sort of okay my bad it should be it should be in you know, commas let's say Navdeep and yeah let's have some sort of mail id too and the mail id would be i guess something it can be yeah Navdeep at gmail.com what i'm going to do is like i'm going to copy the stuff let me create some users Okay, that's pretty much I want. So let's have this as user two and three, and let's say it should be four, then five, then six, then seven, and yeah, that's it. That's pretty much we want. And what we can do is like we can basically change the name, and let's have some commas separate each one of them. Yeah, so that is pretty much what we want and what this thing is going to do this thing is like this whole val is going to return me something that would be return me the result of fake users result dot success dot fake users now what is this success actually now you might think that why I have this success and what is this result basically so this result is nothing but it is just coming from a sealed class now what is this sealed class you can imagine a sealed class as a envelope no i hope so you have envelopes like you have seen envelopes let me have my sealed class first of all then i would explain this to you like an sealed class is a envelope which is going to hold the data for me like the C class holds the data and the data inside the C class basically don't change so if I have a C class let's name it as user UI state so basically this thing is going to keep a track of the UI state of the user let's take it as a user UI state great now with this let's this is a class now let's convert this class into a c class yeah that's pretty much now this thing will have an object object of like loading and loading would be of type user state then we will have a data class the data class would be success like say if we have a success then the success would return me something of type val users list of users 
and this will be also extend the user UI state. Then the next thing I would have a data class error. So when I have run into some error, I am basically going to use it. So where I am going to use it? I am going to use it inside my view models in the next video. In this video, I am going to explain you about the repository and why we have just created it. So we have some fake users. Let's change the fake users name or we can name it as some random users it is all up to us or what we can do is like just copy the stuff and we are going to use a little bit of ai for this let's come to the ai and give me some random users so yeah let's have some random users in this format okay great that's pretty much like that's enough I guess so we can use them let's just copy the users that's it so we have our fake users now now we can implement the fake users inside the view model so our repository is basically completed our repository is completed so now what we can do is we can move to our dependency injection layer before we move to it i would suggest to complete our view models because our view model will be also dependent our repository and then inside our dependency injection layer we are going to provide all the dependencies at one go so this would be like a easy task let's name it as user view models that's it now since this is a view model this thing should return me something of type view models yeah that's it and yeah this thing is going to take something as a constructor it will be a private val the private val would be repository and it would be of type user repository now as you can see that this is also dependent on a user repository for its working so my view model is dependent on the repository for its working and my repository is basically dependent on my api service for its working so means we have to provide the dependency for their working till now we haven't provided any sort of dependency over here so let's try to understand how to implement those things like we have our view models over here then first of all let's have a val let's have a private val which would be private but mutable let's name it as ui state yeah that's particularly what i want since this is a mutable state flow this requires an initial value and i have provided it the initial value as loading now here comes the role of my u like my c class what i have created now try to understand what i'm trying to say the first thing is like this is a private well but this is a mutable state flow now what is a mutable state flow just understand it like it requires an initial values and it gives something as an output just the basic definition of mutable state flow as it defines it is mutable and it is a state flow what is a flow flow is something like which you imagine like first thing which comes in your mind is a flow of water or something like that imagine flow like a conveyor belt and basically what you are going to do is keep some sort of data on the conveyor belt and what conveyor belt does is transfer the data from one end to another right have you ever stepped upon a escalator or inside a mall or inside a metro so that is particularly what the flow does the flow takes the data imagine yourself as a data and it is going to transfer you from the bottom to the up like this is what an escalator does like transfer you from the bottom to up or from up to bottom right so in this case you are the data and the escalator is actually the flow so the flow is going to take some sort of data and just show it like it is used for some sort of live data when we have live data incoming so if when we use our api we have some live data incoming towards us so basically that's where the flow comes in we are going to use the live data so now why we are using c class now as i said that mutable state flow actually required a initial loading state like an initial state and this thing does not allow any repetitions if we have used a mutable shared flow then that thing does not require an initial value and the things can be repeated like i can have the state of loading more than once and like that
but this is a immutable state flow that's why we are implementing a initial value and you will get uh, more deep knowledge about the mutable state flow and shared flow later on but yeah meanwhile just have an idea that this thing is something like this and definitely i'm going to have a video very soon on this topic let it extend this thing and then yeah that's it we need to change some sort of code the, now we have a valve which is public but it is a state flow it's not mutable it's a state flow so we have a valve ui state basically it's a state flow and this is of type ui state and any and i have assigned its value to the ui state now what does this whole line means shall make sense to you in a while you can just remove this code yeah that's it if you want now first of all i want to have a init block init block is triggered whenever the application opens this init block is going to load the users or we can say fetch the users as the application host or like as soon as the view model comes into the play so we have this load users now let's try to make our load users let's have a function load users and this thing is basically going to use my ui state to fetch the users so as soon as i start this thing the first thing which i want to do is to set the state flow to loading the first thing which i want is to set this state flow to loading i want to set its states to loading let's change its value to ui state dot value is equal to user ui state dot loading now the thing is in loading this will keep in loading until and unless my data is loaded and i can show something like until and unless my data is in loading i can use some sort of circular view or circular progress bar to show that yeah my data is in progress so yeah this thing is like this so i have this ui state flow dot loading then the next thing is i want to have a view model scope this view model scope is basically a type of coroutine scope which is specifically made for my view models if you want to have some sort of video on the implementation you can feel free to comment out and I'll, we will basically make a video for this device so we want to get our repository in the game and i want to fetch the users and then what i want to do is when i have is like on success like when i have a success state i want to have a lambda users and it will store all the values of the users i want to have stored the success response in the lambda and i want to emit the state now i want to change the ui state values to success now imagine that the state is success so whatever the data is coming will be stored inside this variable this variable is of type list so i will store the list of users inside this success variable i, I will store it inside my success variable and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to transfer it to the ui state's value and all that state would be transferred to the lambda now i have stored the list of users inside my lambda and i'm going to emit those things inside my ui portion okay so i have initially like this thing now i should have a on failure success listener which i'm going to implement just right now we can have like dot on failure success listener like when I'm in failure. I want to store the response in an error lambda. Let's have a lambda again, which is going to store the error state, and I want to set my UI state's value to error, and I will simply emit the error, or else I have an Elvis operator which says unknown error. Okay. Now this is pretty much we want, I guess. So I missed a bracket. Yeah, that's pretty much so this is how we are actually going to use it like we can make it private and yeah this thing is pretty much what we want this is how we are trying to fetch the data from our api you will get a better idea when you work on some real life project inside the coin okay so this is how we make our repository inside a coin application till now we haven't implemented coin but yeah from the next video in which you are going to work on the di layer we would definitely work upon coin so that's pretty much for this video now let's meet in the next video for the further implementation